Sup authors and self-publishers out there, let's go ahead and talk a little bit of my gripes about self-publishing because not too long ago I shared a little bit of uh, my laundry list of all my complaints with KDP, but I don't think it's very fair to let other people go unscathed because I'm going to just discuss some of the self-publishing companies and services that I got a little bit of beef with. Let's start it out with Bowker and Nielsen ISBNs because, man, why not? If you're not familiar with what an ISBN is, it is an international standard book number. It's an identifier for your specific book. And it's something that is good to have because if you want international distribution recognition for your title, having an ISBN is almost essential, almost essential. Now, Bowker and Nielsen, if you're not aware of, run a monopoly. Now, this is not me exaggerating. This is not conspiracy theory. This is a fact. They run a monopoly on ISBN registration in the US and UK respectively. This means you're forced to buy from them and have to eat the cost. Whereas in some regions outside the US and UK, you get a considerably cheaper cost for an ISBN. And in some cases like Canada, you get it 100% free. If you're in the US or UK and you're buying your ISBN anywhere else, you're doing it wrong. They own the imprint, whoever you're buying it from. So it's essentially a waste. No, you cannot simply transfer an ISBN and change the imprint. It just won't work that way. It doesn't. Want to know how much it costs to buy an ISBN in the States with Bowker? $125 for a single ISBN. That's a single book. That doesn't cover your ebook, your print book, your paperback, your hardcover, your audiobook edition. No, that's just for one single iteration. But if you buy it in bulk though, good news, you get a greater discount. I bought a thousand ISBNs. You ready for this? For $1,500. Now don't question me on this one. I know I probably shouldn't have bought that many. It's gonna probably be enough for my grandchildren and my great grandchildren's grandchildren, even though I don't plan on having any children. So I don't know how that's gonna work. Get a hold of Marvel Universe. Maybe they'll write something up about it. But that runs about $1.50 per ISBN. Why isn't that the standard price from the get-go? That just doesn't seem awful fair to me. I mean, seriously, why? Just don't get me started on this one. Mwah. Moving on, we have to go from an ISBN over to these premium barcodes. Hey, if you're looking to put a barcode on your cover, stop. Do not, and I mean, I repeat, do not ever buy a barcode, ever. I don't care if my grammar was off, screw you. I, I'm just gonna roll with that. Most sites like KDP, Ingram Spark, and the like will automatically create a barcode for you, free, free of cost. That's pretty cool, right? But if you want placement in brick and mortar bookstores, you'll need to bring your own barcode because it needs like the pricing on it, needs the category, needs all the special bells and whistles that's required for in-store purchases. Let me save you the time and the money on your barcodes. Go get your barcode mate at the Kindlepreneur 100% free by visiting dalelinks.com slash barcode. And another site you can get it for free is ebook fairs when you visit dalelinks.com slash barcode two. Or just simply Google up free barcode generator. Chances are very likely they're gonna be able to give you the same thing that you need for your book cover without having to pay it. Just save you some money. You're very welcome. Man, I tell you what, man, uh, yeah, humility. Yep, here we go. Amazon advertising. Got a couple gripes about them. This ridiculous suggested CPC, the cost per click. Now, some of you that aren't in the know, my apologies. Some of this might go over your head, but let me just simplify it here. Anytime that you get your ad served up, you are having to pay for anybody that clicks on your ad, all right? But what drives up these costs? Well, competition. People are continually wanting to up that and keep increasing and increasing and increasing. And do they pay off? Sure. You can justify it with a series. So if you got a series of book, you can assume readers will buy through the series at some point. If you got a good conversion rate from one book to the next, then hey, maybe $4 cost per click ain't too bad. But I don't tend to believe every advertiser is using the high suggested CPCs to get a series buy through. Most people assume the suggested CPC is the gospel. Then everyone scrambles to bid higher for the coveted first page, first position placement for their ads. If you're one of those authors driving up the CPC while losing money hand over fist, stop. Hire a professional or take a few courses about how to leverage Amazon advertising the right way. Oh, as a reminder, Amazon Advertising has numerous certification courses that are absolutely free. You can access them all through your dashboard in the top right corner inside Amazon Advertising. There's a little question mark. Or get the more basic course covering ads for KDP when you visit their marketing tab in your KDP dashboard. Okay, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move on over to another portion of Amazon Advertising that just gets my goat, all right? Gets my goat, and I don't want anybody to get my goat because my goat is my goat, all right? And it's the glitchy auto-targeting. Oh, why? 
Automated targeting ads work really well because you're able to go and source out and figure out what are some good keywords and products that are selling very well and converting and then you can build other campaigns off this. But the thing is, you need to take advantage of the negative keywords option because if something is not converting a keyword or a product, you can suppress those from being served up to the audience that's searching for them or looking at a particular product page where they're served up. My biggest issue is not allowing to suppress a keyword that clearly isn't a good fit for my ads. Now you're probably saying, Dale, all you gotta do is put it in some negative targeting. Yes, in theory, that makes sense, right? But for some reason, I've actually found a glitch in the system. Amazon.com slash redeem was a keyword I was targeted for. And by the way, this was for my Amazon self-publisher series. Doesn't make sense to me, but I'm okay with that because it's an automated targeting campaign. So all I need to do is take that keyword and toss in a negative targeting, right? Wrong. It won't take it. And then I discovered there's even like these keywords with ellipses in them. Doesn't pick them up. It's almost like the keyword was too long and so they put an ellipses on it or it was just somebody searching up for an ellipses. And, uh, if you can't add it to negative targeting, then why are you charging us for that? I've been waiting for over two weeks now for any resolution from them. And hey, I, I'll give them credit. They've reported back to me almost every week saying, hey, look, we're still looking into this. We're sorry about it. Which that's totally cool. But I've seen multiple issues, yet customer service is still waiting. I'm, I'm in limbo here, man. Not to mention those garbage words come in and I pay for them and have no way of shutting them off. Hey, if you're that customer, by the way, Searching for a URL in Amazon search bar, you're looking for a website, get your eyes checked. Or have your five-year-old great-grandson show you how to use the internet. It's easier than you know and you'll actually find what you're looking for. <laughs> and let's discuss pop-up marketing services with zero reach and high costs. Have you ever gotten one of those unsolicited emails from companies that saw your book and would love to help promote it? Yeah, come on. Let me know inside the comments right now if that's something that's happened to you because I have a feeling that nine out of 10 of you've run into this issue. Your Stranger Ranger radar should be going berserk by now when getting one of those emails. First, how did they get your email? Hmm? How were they able to tie you to that publication? But let's just push those questions to the side and ask the real question. If this marketing company was so good, then why are they resorting to cold prospecting through emails? Successful marketing companies like BookBob or even a smaller company like BookDoggy or any of the others that are really good like them are too busy marketing the books for the customers and delivering a solid ROI for their customers. Not cold prospecting via email. You gotta kinda wonder what business are they in? Let's move on over to contract auto renewals and some accounts. Without any way to opt out of that other than reading a bunch of legalese and you got to track down support to get it done. Now what is being done right is KDP select. You literally just have a box. You can just deselect and then after the 90 days are up, your eBooks out of the KDP select program is so simple. There's no friction whatsoever, but you look at platforms like say audiobook creation exchange or Babel cube. Oh, their contracts are just completely wrong. It just creates too much work for us and it's too much work for them. By the way, don't get me started on Babel Cube. They deserve an entire video about all the things I dislike about their platform. And here's the TLDR provided by the Alliance of Independent Authors watchdog list. Babel Cube operates as a matchmaking service connecting authors with translators. However, translators are not vetted and their quality and service vary widely. That's just the tip of the iceberg with them, folks, I assure you. All right, well, speaking of ACX and horrible contracts, how about that audiobook creation exchange 50-50 royalty split? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Audiobook creation exchange allows cash-strapped authors the option to work with narrators at no extra cost. It's pretty nice, but what's the catch? You have to split the meager earnings you pull from each sale with the narrator in perpetuity. That means forever. Sorry, I'm getting all fancy with you. I just watched too much Sark Tank. That's, that's the issue. I, I blame Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful. Is he related? I don't know. We got the same haircut. Uh, though they tell you the contract's good for seven years, what they fail to mention is you do not own the rights to the audio file. You simply can remove your title from circulation after seven years. If you do want rights to the audio files, you have to work out a deal with the narrator to get the rights. Naturally, I found that out. They are not willing to charge their normal finished price per hour rate. Hey, why? They stand something to lose if I break that 50-50 royalty contract. Instead, they jack up their rate. 
rates and charge you a higher premium. I'm sorry, but that's just ass. Yep, I said it, I'm standing by it. Video editor, don't cut that out because it's high time people know how I truly feel. And flowery word choices are unsuitable for such a crap deal. Find Away Voices is a better option where you can do a royalty split agreement. You pay 50% up front for the work for a 10 year agreement. If at any time you wanna buy the rights, there's no haggling or shenanigans. You just pay 100% of the finished price per hour for the project. Though it favors the rights holder more than ACX does for the narrators, it's not a mandatory option for narrators to select. If they don't wanna do it, they just don't do it. If you must insist on sticking with ACX for distribution, do not, and I repeat, do not, in my opinion, you should not select 50-50 royalty split. Just go with the finished price per hour or wait till you can afford it. It just might pay off. And while it seems like I'm tossing shade at some of these companies, honestly, there's some love intended in this next one is no exception. It's not that I'm trying to kiss up to the company by any stretch. It's BookBub and they've got that amazing feature deal. It's a little bit of an enigma. Let me get you caught up to speed on this. BookBub is essentially an email marketing system of sorts that they have a deep, deep list of various genres and readers that are voracious. So by getting over with a book bub feature deal, you're able to get in front of your ideal audience and get some insane downloads. Now I watched a webinar about how to best land a feature deal and all I got was just keep applying. Now I've done it a number of times and I just stopped, I just gave up. Because when you do get rejected, all right, you're not given a clear understanding if it was a timing related issue or your book is hammered garbage. And I don't like to think that BookBub and I are on a friendship level. I mean, maybe it's a bit complicated. We don't have a back and forth relationship, but I feel like we should be at least on a respect level that if I've got something between my teeth, you're gonna tell me about it, right? If I have an ugly baby, you let me know because I think that you're in a position of trust and you're in a position of expertise. And if something's off, I would rather you just tell me. Maybe you give it it is an option to some authors that want to hear the ugly truth and the other ones you can just say hey here's a generalized you know type thing i would rather know than not know when you finally do land a deal though it's a huge investment folks but it is paid off for a lot of authors i've only heard of one bad roi story but he actually said you know what it probably was on me more than anything but that was one out of like dozens of people i've spoke to who have landed bookbub deals Next up comes the wonky book cover formatting of Barnes & Noble Press and Blurb. Oh man, these two print-on-demand platforms put out some stellar quality content. I mean, when you get the print quality, it is absolutely amazing. It, it's almost like it's been woven from the paper of the gods. It's just really good. Like, I do love both of their print qualities. But the issue is, first of all, let's start with Blurb. Their ISBN barcode on the bottom middle of the back cover is just, why? Why can I can I just put my barcode like no I don't oh why you got to be different it's not as easy as using the same files as elsewhere see generally speaking I can use the same files for my covers on KDP Ingress Spark and Lulu with no need to make modifications I know this is a printer problem and more than a distribution problem and uh, let's go over to Barnes and Noble Press because they got tutorials on how to format a cover with Microsoft Word nope not doing that. No way. Um, I, you know, one of my favorite YouTubers, Derek Murphy, he can do it. He's amazing at doing it. And he even has a full free course about it. Look it up. DIYbookcovers.com, I think is like the website. I, I have no affiliate to this one. It's just amazing that he can use Microsoft Word to create a cover. But the Barnes & Noble, like, it, it was no. Like, no, I wouldn't hang that up on my fridge. I'm not good at that stuff. In their defense, the finished product, though, is, in my opinion, the best quality option. Chef's kiss. And you know what? I already did a video about this one already. And it's Ingram Spark. Now, Ingram Spark, I do have much love for them. I didn't want to ever tell people like, hey, don't go to that platform, but I did want to tell some of the faults. One of those big faults that I have to this day, so my biggest gripe is the all or nothing distribution philosophy. Now, they boast a reach of over 40,000 online retailers and sellers. Why not give people what they want? The option to deselect avenues already used elsewhere. I mean, if I want to go directly to Apple, I should be able to have the option to remove Apple through Ingram Spark. I know that takes away from your bottom line, but it certainly makes me happier and more willing to use your platform because there's sometimes I won't publish a book to Ingram Spark because you won't allow me that distribution to those other avenues that I could pretty much 
cut out the middleman and go right to the source. So there's no hatred meant on this one right here. And I think maybe this probably comes up from higher up. I have no inside intel on this one at all. Ingram Content Group, the company that owns them, probably dictates how the selection's done. It's like, hey, it's either all or nothing. Ingram Content Group, come on, give the people what they want. Hey, you know what? I, I gave everybody the dickens on this one. I know, that's I, like I went back to the 1920s. I feel like a flapper all over again here. Like I was a flapper originally. But before I start breaking out into some kind of scat, what I do want to do is send you on over to my issues with KDP. Oh, I had some gripes. If you missed out on that one, you need to go check it out over here. What are you doing waiting and watching me? Go over here.